Love is a lot of things to a lot of different people, but I do think that um, uh, we all have inherited these three basic brain systems for mating and reproduction, the sex drive, romantic love, and deep feelings of attachment. But um, when you take a look around the world at world poetry, I think poetry is a very good uh, um, uh, litmus test, almost a... I think poetry is a very good um, indication of the emotions. And all over the world, you see the same descriptions of romantic love. For example, um, the first thing that happens when you fall in love is a person takes on what I call special meaning. As uh, George Bernard Shaw said, he said, love consists of overestimating the differences between one woman and another. And indeed, we do. You, and then you focus on this person. That person's car is different from every other car in the parking lot. Uh, that person's, um, the street they live on is different. The music that they like is different. Everything about them is special, and you focus on it. In fact, before I began putting people into the brain scanner, I would ask them, you know, what do you not like about your sweetheart? And they would list what they didn't like, and then they would sweep that aside and just focus on what they did like. And other basic characteristics of romantic love are intense energy. You can walk all night and uh, talk till dawn. Um, real mood swings, elation when things are going well, uh, crashing into terrible despair when you don't get an email or don't get a call, um, real uh, possessiveness, uh, uh, it's called mate guarding among animals. Uh, you know, most people don't care um, if they're casually sleeping with somebody, they don't care if uh, that person's sleeping with somebody else. But when you're in love, you really care. Um, but the three main characteristics of romantic love are intense craving, for emotional union with this person. You like to sleep with them, but real emotional union with them. And intense motivation to win them, what people will do when they're in love. And last but not least, obsessive thinking. You can't stop thinking about this person. Somebody's camping in your head. It's also uh, quite uncontrollable. Uh, Stendhal once said, love is like a fever. It comes and goes quite independently of the will. And indeed it does. It just visits you. This brain system becomes triggered and you're off to the races. I think that most people uh, believe that romantic love dies after a certain number of weeks, months, or years. But uh, my colleagues and I have um, actually proved that wrong. Um, the first author on our most recent uh, brain scanning study is Bianca Acevedo. And Bianca and the rest of us uh, wanted to see what happens in the brain among people who report that they're still in love, not loving, but in love with somebody after an average of 21 years of marriage. And so in New York, we put uh, 17 people who said they were still in love with their spouse um, into the brain scanner, and we fa found exactly the same um, activity in this tiny little factory near the base of the brain that we found among those who had just fallen madly in love in the ventral tegmental area. So. Uh, you can sustain romantic love long term, but we did find one difference. When you've just fallen in love, you find we find activity in a brain region associated with anxiety. And among those who were in love long term, that has disappeared. And instead, it is you now feel a sense of calm and pain, and actually, and pain, let me see, you now feel a sense of calm. And so what I think is going on among people who are in love long term is they still want that man to come home for dinner and they still want to sit down and talk about the day and they still want to go on that vacation together and they want to share their lives. They're not thinking of divorce. They feel that sense of romance and tingling uh, sensation. But uh, if they don't get a phone call at lunchtime, they don't crumble into a corner and cry. That anxiety is replaced with calm. I haven't studied the, the differences in the brain between those who are uh, met in high school and those who uh, met later in life. But I do think that those who met in high school have some wonderful advantages. And that is that they know each other's parents. They knew the dog that she grew up with and his younger sister and the fact that he was a high school star and that she was wonderful at the jitterbug at dancing. Uh, you know, they have all those memories that are wonderful. This is one of the reasons I think that, you know, there's a real trend right now of um, older people uh, divorcing and then finding their first love on the Internet 
and falling in love with somebody who, uh, who they really were in love with in high school. And they do have that advantage of this uh, understanding of the house that they grew up in, the kind of car that uh, he drove, et cetera, et cetera, the kinds of things that really bring continuity. As a matter of fact, I interviewed some of these people who, uh, who um, had um, reconnected much later. And one of them was a couple, who, they were probably both in their 60s. And um, I asked him whether she had changed at all. And he said, not at all. And then I saw photographs of the two of them in high school standing in front of a Christmas tree, and I could see them clearly now. And they were so dramatic, I mean, they both gained 100 pounds. Uh, they were so dramatically different. But, you know, once you get a, a vision of who this person is, if you can hold on to this, um, you will create a happy relationship. Mm -hmm.